What up, what up, what up? Welcome to the Hot Button Sports Show. I'm your boy, Isaac Lane. And uh, today, man, we're going to talk about a little basketball. Can I just be honest? Can I just really be honest? I'm exhausted from basketball season. I really am. I love it, but I'm exhausted. And I'm going to be totally honest of why I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted because everybody, for the most part, that I want to watch play basketball in the playoffs are hurt. They're hurt or they're either at home. But for the most part, they're hurt. I mean, think about it. Lakers out because of injuries. Brooklyn out. Injuries. Kawhi Leonard out. Injury. I mean, my, now Greek freak Giannis out. Injuries. I mean, my goodness. I understand injuries are a part of the game. But, man, this is ridiculous. And there is a person to blame. What do you mean? How can you blame somebody for injuries? There is a person to blame. As great of a job as he did last year, man, I, I, I don't think he really thought this through going into this year. And that's Adam Silver, man. Adam Silver, the commissioner. You heard it from guys who played in the bubble in the playoffs, and especially from the last two teams that were standing, or you go even the semifinals. You heard it from the players. You heard it from the coaches. Don't rush us back. LeBron told you, don't rush us back. Several players, don't rush us back. Because if you rush us back after this hell camp called the bubble, you rush us back. I don't, I don't even think they had 60 days of rest. And you throw them right back on the court. I mean, that's to me, that was a bonehead move. I feel like they should have waited until January, maybe even February, and then caught up, you know, the, the next season. The season after, I, it was just, I believe that all of these injuries, not all, but a lot of these injuries could have been avoided if we didn't start the season up so early. So much, so, so much quicker. You let me know how you feel in the comments. That's my, hey, that's, 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 that's just the way I feel about it. And it's not just me. Players have come out and personnel have come out and they have said the same thing. So I'm exhausted because we don't get a chance to see the stars like we want to see. However, that has given us an opportunity to really witness a true Cinderella story. All right. Last year, that Cinderella story was the Miami Heat. This year, the Cinderella story, which I think when their star player is healthy, they're better than last year's Heat. That's the Atlanta Hawks. Now, you know, if you know on this show, I'm hard on Atlanta. I'm hard on Georgia simply because in almost every sport, they have a ton of talent, but they can't seem to put it together. But I am going to give the Atlanta Hawks their flowers while they can smell them. Hats off to the Hawks. The Hawks have a good squad. I was in a conversation with some people, with some cousins from Georgia, actually, and they just tried to tell me that the Hawks ain't nothing but Trey Young. The Hawks, if Trey Young, you take Trey Young off of the Hawks, and then the Hawks are completely dismal. They, they, they suck. Um, I had somebody tell me Trey Young is better than Devin Booker. Y'all let me know how you feel about that in, in the comments. And that, you know, uh, if you take Devin Booker away from his team, they won't miss a beat, which I vehemently disagree with that. But people was just telling me the Hawks don't got a team. The Hawks got Michael Jordan. The Hawks got Trey Young. They weren't saying he is Michael Jordan, but they're saying he represents that much to his team. He's like a LeBron to the team. And I kept telling them, listen, you can check. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to try to put it on this video. The screen, I screenshot it. From December 2nd, 2020, when uh, they were making all of these trades for the Hawks, I shared it in our cousin's chat. 
I said, you know, when they got when they when when, when they got Chris Dunn and they got Bogdanovich and they got um, all these other cats, man, they eventually got a Rondo, Gallinari, all this. I said it in the chat, and I'm going to put it on here. I said it. I said the Hawks can very well win the East. I called it, and I'm not even from Georgia. I don't even like the Hawks. I called it. I said the Hawks have a squad. The Hawks have a team. And everybody I knew and had this conversation with kept going at my head. They don't have a team. They don't have a coach. All they have is Trey Young. Well, don't, don't touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord answers prayer. Because last night, Trey Young is out. And the Hawks have to go up against the Bucks. And I believe they're very evenly matched. As a matter of fact, without Trey Young, the Bucks are better, in my opinion, because they have the freaking Greek Freak. And even before the Greek Freak got injured, the Hawks were doing damage to the Bucks. Here's what we see when we look at the Hawks. When we look at the Hawks, we see a ton of role players who not only know their job and do it well, but they accept their job. They accept their role as role players. Kyrie Irving left Cavs because he could not accept his role as a role player. And he's never sniffed an, a, a finals since then. Right? Scotty Pippen, take that as compared to Scotty Pippen. Scotty Pippen knows he's a role player. Knew he was a role player. Knew he was robbing to Batman on the Chicago Bulls. He accepted it. He flourished in it. And they won rings. If you want to win rings, then you got to have a team who understands that the role players have to play their role and they have to accept their role. And the Hawks are doing that. It was so nice to see last night. No Trey Young, but nobody on the Hawks was trying to replace Trey Young. Nobody on the Hawks, not even Sweet Lou, who could have went for 40. But not even Sweet Lou has the capabilities of doing so. Not even Sweet Lou was trying to fill Trey Young's shoes. They all understood. We give ourselves the best shot to win this game if we all play our part and play our role. And look what happened. Now with the Greek freak out. Oh, man. man Hawks going to the finals, man. Hawks going to the finals, man. The Hawks are going to the NBA Finals. Will they win it? I don't know. Because I'm not quite sure if they can beat a fully healthy Suns. And I'm not quite sure if they can beat a Kawhi-less Clippers. But they can beat the Bucks. They can beat the Bucks. This year is also an anomaly in my opinion. Because almost every year, superstars, superstars are winning championships. Almost every year, superstar, superstar team, superstar team, superstar team, super team, superstar, 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 superstar. If the Hawks or the Suns are able to somehow win a championship, it might be the first time in a little minute that we saw just a really good basketball team won. No super duper huge stars, especially with the Hawks. Yeah, you got Chris Paul, but he's been banged up. Devin Booker, he's young. He hasn't entered the superstar status quite yet. I think he's approaching it. And by the end of this season, you can label him a superstar. But man, listen, this is the first year in a minute to where, man, it's just been the best basketball team. Not the team with the biggest star. And I have to give my hats, take my hats off to the Hawks for that performance on last night. They show grit, they show guts, they show determination, and they show that if you play basketball the right way, you don't need superstars. What you need is a basketball team who understands and accepts their role on the squad. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about them Hawks. I'll holler at you.